Hello once again everybody, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video. We're going to talk uh, today about borderline personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. A lot, uh, some of this is going to have to do with co-parenting, also going to have to do with uh, custody and divorce, dealing with uh, narcissism and borderline uh, when it comes to custody, divorce, co-parenting and the like. So. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Scott Carter. I am a licensed therapist. I do a lot of family work. I do a lot of work with teenagers. I've had a lot of interactions with what I would call a high conflict parent. High conflict parents, uh, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, high conflict parents are sort of a loose umbrella term that I use, but can often mean someone who has a personality disorder, most commonly narcissistic or borderline personality disorder, but also sometimes antisocial personality disorder. There are other personality disorders and I just don't, I just don't uh, encounter them in these contexts in terms of, hang on, I'm gonna move my mic a little bit closer. See if we can get some good audio here. <clears throat> uh, I don't, I don't uh, run into really any other personality disorder in this context. I'm sure that they are difficult in their own rights, but I don't find them to be nearly as common. And so I have worked with a lot of kids that have had narcissistic or borderline parents. They're very difficult to deal with in court. They're very difficult to deal with when it comes to custody, divorce, and co-parenting. And so me doing a lot of work with kids, I've encountered a lot of borderline and narcissistic parents. For the record, I honestly have, um, I believe at least, <laughs> relatively speaking, fair amount of compassion, especially for those who have borderline personality disorder. It's just extremely difficult for me to get around or get past some of the ways that they go about parenting. They can be really abusive parents. They can be really, really, uh, some of their parenting practices are, are bad, really, really bad. They don't have a monopoly on bad, bad parenting by any stretch of the imagination. However, they are not good. <laughs> So let's get into this. Um, let's get into this. So I have found that sometimes, like if I'm treating a kid, a teenager, um, I usually do like 12 to 18 year olds. Um, sometimes I'll do a little bit younger than that. It sort of depends on how well they do cognitively. And if I have two parents, uh, there are certain things that I catch or have often seen red flags, if you will, that have indicated to me that one of these parents has a personality disorder. And full disclosure, it's not always necessarily the parent that you think, because the, especially the narcissistic, well, the, the narcissistic and borderline parents often frequently, especially narcissism, uh, often and frequently attempt to portray the other parent as the one who is narcissistic or borderline, but let's get into it. So this is one of my first, I put this one in as number one deliberately. This is usually my first warning sign or indicator that a parent may have a personality disorder because it shows up like right off the bat, okay? They immediately start bad mouthing the other parent. And I'm talking immediately, like within the first initial contact or discussion with them. The first, I get emails, I get phone calls, um, and especially, if, especially during that first therapy session, I have had many, many incidences uh, and situations, especially during that first initial uh, therapy session when the parent is telling me that the other parent is a monster, horrible, horrible person. And I've seen this many, many times, um, many times. I can't even begin to count. And I'll give you a scenario, okay? Um, kid comes in with one of the parents and as I'm talking to the parent about, you know, well, what are you seeing from the kid? Because kids, kids have limited insights and parents are really good sources of information in terms of what issues are the kids having? What does the kid need help with? Um, what are you seeking help uh, specifically for? What issues, right? And in asking these questions about the kid, the parent immediately starts well, you know, he or she is struggling with their grades. Their dad is horrible, you know, that type of narrative. Um, dad just doesn't care. He's, he's bad. He's horrible. He's this and that and the other. And right off the bat, okay, I've even had emails. Hey, I'd like to get counseling for my kid. Okay, sure thing. 
oh, by the way, just so you know, the dad or the mom is not good and they're not, you know, you don't want to talk to them. Right off the bat, they immediately start bad mouth. That's, to me, a big red flag. Huge. Um, nine times out of ten, that is an early indicator that they likely have a personality disorder, okay? And this goes beyond expressing concerns. Um, it's bad, ra it, sorry, it's outright bad mouthing um, and, and insulting and slandering. You call them names, oh, they're horrible, they're a nasty person, they're a monster, they're just a jerk, they're abusive, um, making accusations. They give them labels. I hear this all the time. Uh, my, my wife is, she's narcissistic or she's borderline or my husband or my ex is, is narcissistic. He's a narcissist. And when I hear that right off the bat, like within the first encounter, I start to think that the, the person that I'm talking to, that parent is likely the one that has personality disorder. And I know that my screenshot here or my, uh, my camera window is cutting that one off. So I'll read it. Um, their initial goal seems to be that they want to convince me that their ex is a, is a monster or the current partner is a, is a monster, okay? They're, it's like they're, that is their first goal. They want me to believe them that their ex or soon-to-be ex or whatever is a bad person. Now, there's several reasons why they do this. One is just self-preservation. They're sort of like, I have to get them before they get me. Um, borderlines especially, well, narcissists too, they tend to have this um, uh, paranoid ideation that, every, that people are out to get them. And the best way that they can safeguard themselves against that is to uh, get them first. Now, there's another reason for this. Narcissists especially are notorious for trying to recruit other professionals to take their side. And I'll be honest, uh, this is where it can get a little tricky because I've, I've actually seen a number, quite a large number, of other therapists that have fallen for this. They, they buy into this story. They haven't met the other parent, but they have bought into this story that they are a narcissist. They're a bad person. They're a bad parent, and they believe the story. And on occasion, it is, it's not uncommon for, for a therapist to just completely buy into this. They, they may be naive. They may be inexperienced. And uh, as a side note, if you're in a custody case or a divorce case and your ex comes into court waving around a letter because their therapist has uh, labeled you with a personality disorder, um, making a custody recommendation when they've never even met you, that therapist is way out of bounds and you can get them into a heap, and I mean a heap of trouble. Uh, that's grounds for um, uh, career suicide. If you're a therapist, if you happen to be a therapist and you're watching this, never, ever, 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 look at me, never write a letter for the court claiming that someone is having a personality disorder or making a custody recommendation when you've never even met them. You've ne never even met the other side or seen the other side of the equation. That is potential career suicide. I... I I'm part of professional organizations. I know the guys at the licensing boards that are on the disciplinary boards and this and that and the other. And they will tell you, I, I hear their stories, man, and they will tell you never, ever do that. Never make a custody recommendation. Again, if you see a therapist doing that, you can get them into a heap of trouble. Um, number two, they blame everyone else for the issues that are happening. And I'll be honest, this is uh, related to my kind of number one, numero uno, run away from that person uh, thing in my life, both personally and professionally. People that refuse to take any accountability whatsoever, they're always a victim and they're always blaming everybody. They are 0% part of the problem and everybody else is 100% of the problem. Those people should be avoided. Um, and so I look for this. To me, this is a strong indicator that someone has a personality disorder. People with personality disorders want to avoid vulnerability and taking any accountability for anything that they've done is likely going to make them vulnerable, especially in court. So they, of course, are going to blame everything. They blame their ex. They blame their family. They even blame the children. And, and I'm going to get to this. But I hear people ask all the time, well, people that have a personality disorder, don't they just treat the children different because they're kids? No, the answer is no, but I'm, I'm going to get to that. Again, there's zero accountability. 
None. Uh, problems always take two people. Always. And again, uh, this is just this is just an indicator to me. This is a red flag for people in general. I don't I don't work professionally with, with people that don't take account accountability. I don't associate personally with these types of people. I just I run. I don't walk away from these types. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, number three indicator that uh, one of the parents, potentially both, have a personality disorder. And that is that the children have a lot of issues. And I didn't put this, but uh, usually starting at young ages. Okay, the most common one that I see is social anxiety. Or even just uh, anxiety in general. Generalized anxiety, especially starting at young ages. If the 10-year-old has panic attacks, I'm looking for a parent that has personality disorder. Um, 10 year old should not be having panic attacks. You know, for, I get, I get these stories. I was working at a high school, 14 year old kid is high, staying in the bathroom all, all day because of social anxiety, crippling anxiety. Sure enough, uh, uh, dad turned out to be total narcissist. Okay. You know, I didn't even meet this kid and they said, we cannot get this kid out of the bathroom. And I was like, <laughs> smell a narcissist or a borderline. Okay, they, the kids often lack a social life. Uh, this is ex also extreme. This is extremely common uh, with a borderline parent. Borderline parents are threatened by friendships. The kid, kid goes and spends time with friends, and the borderline parent is thinking they don't love me and is angry, and uh, takes it out on the kids. And the kids are afraid to go spend time with friends again. Yeah, uh, the kids have usually have zero or no coping skills. None. Uh, they, they're just a ball of anxiety. Um, they don't know how to cope. They struggle to cope. Uh, often have a poor self-image. Uh, they, they just have a crippling low self-esteem. <clears throat> Usually that's because of the intense and unrelenting criticism that comes from having a borderline or narcissistic parent. Uh, they have trouble with identity issues. Uh, just meaning that these kids don't have a good sense of who they are. Um, I've seen I've seen kids where it's almost like they're so bland in their just their appearance and their self expression. It's almost like they're trying to remain invisible because when they've been at home <clears throat> with a personality disorder parent, the more invisible they are, the less flack they have tended to take, and so it makes it difficult for them to make friends because they just they don't really have a an identity of sorts. They also are often untrusting of others, sometimes to the point of paranoia. This is a big red flag for me. If I meet a kid, if I meet a teenager, you know, even especially a young one, 13 years old or younger, 14 or younger, and they and they have this general pervasive belief that everybody, including their peers and all other adults, teachers, whatever, are out to get them or are untrustworthy, I'm looking for a parent that has a personality disorder, okay? Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, they are engaging in parental alienation. Now, parental alienation is is um, not necessarily exclusive to narcissism or borderline. Can be an indicator, though. Um, people that engage in parental alienation don't necessarily have a personality disorder, but people that have personality disorders almost always engage in parental alienation. Okay, and I have seen situations where the kids just seem fiercely, and I mean fiercely loyal to one parent while just absolutely hating the guts of the other one. Uh, there's a lot of interesting dynamics there that, that can happen, especially if the kids are under 14 or so, and the kids are fiercely loyal to one parent and hate the other. They start looking for a parent that has personality disorder. Usually, kind of depending, like if the kid is getting in trouble at school and they hate one parent... That can indicate that the parent that they hate is the one with the personality disorder and they're butting heads with them. Um, kids will inevitably butt heads with the, pers the parent that has a personality disorder. If they get to be 16, 17 and they're butting heads with one other parent, like I, I worked with a kid last year, he has, he's 16, has zero contact with his dad, you know, um, potential narcissism there. Zero contact, refuses, abs utterly refuses to talk to his dad. But uh, they can't. They also can't tolerate the children loving the other parent. That's something that I see uh, primarily with borderline. Um, it's it's a sense of betrayal. Um, people with personality disorders uh, they think in black and white. 
and the, their ex in their mind has betrayed them and they are a horrible person. Therefore, if the children love that person, then there's a problem. They're unable to conceptualize that, that a child can love the person that betrayed them. And in, in the, the, that parent's mind, the mind of the narcissistic or borderline parent, that's a betrayal. If the child loves the other parent, you have betrayed me by loving the other parent. That's just how they think, okay? Last one. Number five. Um, they treat children or regard them like adults. So this is another one of my red flags when it comes to human beings in general. This doesn't necessarily mean a personality disorder. But, uh, for example, uh, treating children like they're adults. Engaging the children into adult things. Uh, this, this even extends to pedophilia. Sexual pred predators. And uh, treating children like they are adults. They're not. And... I even have seen, you know, arguments to lower the voting age to, to 16, and it's just like, man, can we can we stop treating kids like they're adults? Can we stop? That is not that is not a good thing. But uh, narcissistic and borderline parents, they 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 tend to hold their children to the same standards that they hold adults to. There's just like no differentiation. They don't, and no, and no. Again, I said this earlier. There's no consideration that they are kids. There's, and for, to me, that's a sign of healthiness. If you look at a kid and go, well, yeah, they're kids, <laughs> you know. Uh, but instead, if the kids do kids, kid things, things that they don't understand, and you're like, they should know better. I don't care if they're kids. To me, that's a problem. Um, this next one, kids are taking on adult responsibilities at young ages. This, to me, is a big red flag that a parent may have narcissism or borderline kid there's a big difference huge difference and i mean huge between kids maybe helping out with the chores you know taking out the trash vacuuming doing the dishes mowing the lawn and just small responsibilities like that you know pooper scooping the dog in the backyard that's one thing but if the kid is cooking meals for the family doing the grocery shopping putting the the younger kids to bed bathing the younger kids Doing the younger kids' laundry. Being responsible for getting the other kids out of bed and off to school. Uh, those are parenting responsibilities. We should not put uh, some kids in charge of parenting or, or caretaking younger kids. And <clears throat> uh, parents that have personality disorders are absolutely notorious. Notorious for doing this. And uh, trying to pass it off as, well, you know, they're just trying to do, I'm just trying to get them to do their part in the home. No, there's, again, there's a big difference between having the kid take out the trash and, and, and having the kid cook meals for the other kids. That's a huge difference, okay? And they attach or project adult traits onto <clears throat> other, uh, 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 the children. Specifically, one that, that alarms me that I see a lot, fair amount anyways, is a narcissistic or borderline parent will accuse children of being master manipulators. And I've even seen this as young as like six, seven years old. Okay. And can six or seven year old kids adopt manipulative behaviors? Yeah, they can. Absolutely they can. But they don't, they don't understand the gravity of those things. They don't understand the long term consequences of those things. And they have absolutely no capacity to understand the, the, the greater dynamic between people and, their, and how their actions relate to that. Um, kids are not capable of understanding those dynamics. Can they, can they adopt man, manipulative behaviors? Yeah, they can. It's usually because their environment is, is screwed up and it's a maladaptive behavior. But it's not because they're master manipulators. So that's just, that's just one one example. Um, another one could be, um, I'm kind of going to go back to pedophilia here, is, uh, you know, oh, that kid's a flirt. Or <laughs> this was uh, this was a pretty heinous thing that I ran into years ago. I was working with juvenile sex offenders and a kid who was about to turn 18 used the term fast children. Man, the kids in that part of town, they are fast. They are fast children, kind of like you would say, like the old term, the, the fast women. 
and referring to children that way. Yeah, that's that's an example of projecting adult traits onto children. No, no, children are not fast. <laughs> They're not. They're not. And if they happen to show behaviors that show that they are fast, then there's probably a big issue with the parents. So that is uh, the five things that indicate to me that a parent may have a uh, borderline or narcissistic personality disorder. And so as a therapist, I do specialize in high conflict divorce, high conflict custody. I have rules for um, uh, navigating court. I also have rules for co-parenting. I have a uh, Socratic questioning method that is effective for dealing with high conflict types, very effective. I teach it to a lot of my clients and they come back when they when they're able to implement it effectively they usually come back with a pretty positive report and they just say wow that was that was really helpful that really was effective and just kind of lowering the conflict um, I also provide services with like uh, documentation review um, I've reviewed emails court documentation custody evaluations and that type of stuff to give my clients feedback on uh, points of concern uh, things that may have been overlooked, maybe places where, like, for example, uh, I was reviewing some emails where a, a father who was a chiropractor was diagnosing the children with medical stuff. And A, chiropractors can't do that. B, you can't do that if you're a parent. I don't care if you're a chiropractor or a full MD. Uh, you can't do that. So those are some of the services that I offer. I'll put my contact information below. You can go to my website. Read some more articles on high conflict divorce, high conflict custody. So go check those out. Thank you for watching my video and um, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm.